Is anybody ready to dive into the word? All right, there we go. There we go, there we go, that's, that's, that's it. All right, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. God, we thank you for this opportunity to hear from you. God, your word is already anointed. So would you anoint our hearts so that we could receive your word with gladness? Would you anoint our ears so that we can hear what it is that you're saying? God, we bind any satanic or demonic force that would try any distraction that would try to hinder your word from coming forth today. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We lose the spirit of peace and liberty today, God. Would you have your way? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, I'm excited to start our new series this week. We're talking about unboxing joy, okay? Unboxing joy. Our series this week is called, our uh, series this month is called Unboxing Christmas. Uh, we got a graphic up there that's coming up. Boom, unboxing Christmas. Now, for those of you who have no idea what um, unboxing is, some of you are like, what does that mean? Um, I'm going to share with you what that means. Um, uh, in, uh, during COVID time, there was uh, this, this phenomenon, this thing that people like to do and people wanted to do where uh, they bought things. And uh, when they bought things, they would buy it and then they would open it up. And you would think that that would be it. No. What they did was they pulled out a camera um, and began to stream online so that other people could see the thing that they bought. Now, usually it would be a high tech, uh, like a camera or a new pair of shoes or it'd be something, you know, of value. And what the unboxing did, the reason that this became a, a popular thing that they still do to this day is because it, it became like a review. It became like this, this thing that you could instantly get a, a real-life review of the product. You know, when you maybe go on, on, uh, on Amazon or you go on these sites, you wonder, like, is that a robot that did that? Is that a real person that, that did that? Or is this real? Now, with the video, you're actually able to enjoy the experience as they open it up, as they show you, oh, oh, look at the, you know, you, you be your own Vanna White, look at the, 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 the color and look at the, the features and it has this and it has that and it has all these things going on and it's able to show you and that thing was called unboxing and today I want to unbox something that I have not found unboxed on YouTube yeah. and this series we are going to unbox Christmas okay I believe that there are some beautiful things that happen and there are some beautiful things that we can talk about when we open up the story and this whole idea of Christmas Right. And so today I want to start with the first gift that uh, I believe that we can have as we unbox Christmas and we're unboxing joy. Somebody say joy. joy. All right. Our life as Christians should be rooted and filled with joy. Now, it's very easy for us to look at our world to look at our circumstances, to look at our situation and say, well, what reason do I have to be joyful? You don't understand my life. You don't understand what's going on. You don't understand my, my upbringing, my financial situation. You don't understand. What reason do I have to be joyful? And I will respond by saying that actually what you're referring to isn't joy. What you're referring to is happiness. Okay? Now, happiness is defined as the state or the condition of feeling or showing pleasure or satisfaction. The state or the condition of feeling or showing pleasure or satisfaction. Okay? Happiness is a state, happiness is a condition, it's a feeling. Okay? And feelings are triggered by external circumstances, and feelings can change based on those circumstances. Okay? Ladies, step outside, 
sunshine, no clouds in the sky, it's the temperature that you like, what happens? You're happy. I'm happy because the sun is shining. I'm happy, okay? But then it starts raining. It starts raining. We, suddenly we, we find our blankets. We, 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 we're like, oh, it's raining outside. I just, I just want to just, just cuddle up. I just... just this, this is how I make it. This is, this is a good weather to just drink some soup and, and cuddle up. Why? Because it's raining outside. Your, your feelings have changed. Family. My wife is, is a big, she loves, loves, loves being around family. Okay? She loves being around family. She's excited. She wants to be there. She wants to be around. Some of us, we don't share that feeling. Not me. I love being around my family. Not me, y'all. <laughs> Just, I'm going to clarify. I love being around my family. But for some of us, when we get around our family, it get a little tense, right? You're, you're walking on eggshells. When the, well, your emotions change at the thought of you being around your family. Okay? Food. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> my emotions changing already. See, I like to go to Texas Roll House, okay? They didn't pay me for this ad, but it is what it is. If they want to sanitize, holla at me. Uh, but I like going to Texas Roll House. The thing I love about Texas Roll House is uh, when you get there, uh, they have th this bread, right? And the br See, look at y'all. See? We are... <laughs> All right, so let's focus, let's focus. We don't want to lose it, okay? So, so they have the bread, and they, and they bring the bread, and they sit down, and you're eating the bread, and, and, and then when you order the food, they got these ribs that just fall off the bone when you get them, and the green beans and the corn. Uh, when I see my food coming, or when I see my waitress over there, when she, I'm looking at the kitchen, so as soon as she come out the kitchen and I see her, at that point, I begin to get happy. Because I know the thing that I have been waiting for and the thing that I ordered is on its way. I, I begin to get happy. Uh, my emotions change, right? Before, I might have been a little hangry, but when I see it coming, now I'm happy. Until they pass my table. Because it wasn't my order. I just ordered, so... But your feelings change based on the circumstances. That's what we're, we're not talking about uh, uh, those changing things. What we're referring to today is something that is consistent. We're talking about joy. There's a song that Daniela stole from my message uh, uh, that we sung in vac Adriana stolen. Sorry, Daniela. Uh, that Adriana uh, stole, in my, stole from my message, a song we used to sing in Vacation Bible School. We sung it earlier. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart. Down in my heart, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Some of y'all are like, what is Vacation Bible School? Don't worry about it. But we're talking about joy. And this joy has to be in my heart. This joy can't be based on external things because the moment that my joy is based on something external, it is no longer joy, it is happiness because it can be changed. Joy is something that is consistent. Joy is defined as internal stability in spite of external circumstances, okay? Internal stability in spite of external circumstances, as a result of the knowledge that God is in control. It is a settled assurance, a quiet confidence in God's sovereignty. It's settled. See, uh, uh, emotions or, or, or happiness is a feeling. Feelings are fleeting. They're constantly changing. They're not settled. Joy is a settled Assurance, a quiet confidence in God's sovereignty. So we see based on these definitions that happiness is different than joy. See, most people in today's society, they, 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 they spend their time, they spend their life, they spend their energy and resource chasing happiness all day long. 
I'm scrolling through Instagram trying to find happiness. Oh, I got a little dose of dopamine. That says so I got happiness, and I keep scrolling. Happiness, I keep scrolling. Happiness, and that's why I'm always addicted to my phone because I'm trying to find happiness, and I'm scrolling to find happiness. And in the minute that I don't have access to it or the minute that it changes now, I don't have it anymore, and we spend our life trying to find happiness. But it's predicated on the outside. Happiness says I'm happy because my circumstance is good. But as soon as my circumstance is bad and I'm not happy anymore, then I'm going to go to try and find something else that will make me happy. And the cycle continues because it is never enough. The cycle continues because we have now placed people and things in a position to fulfill something that it was never meant to fulfill. We've placed relationships, our spouses, in positions and requiring of them things that they were never meant to fulfill. They were never meant to give you joy. Joy is rooted. Joy is the settled, quiet confidence. Joy is rooted in what we know. Joy is rooted in Jesus. Joy uh, says, I'm not going to be moved by, by what's going on around me. I'm not going to be moved by the situations and the circumstances that are going on because I know that God turns all things for the good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Joy says, we serve a God that has already overcome the world. So when I woke up this morning, despite what happens when I wake up, I woke up in victory. Why? Because God has already overcome the world. And if he lives in me, I overcome the world. Therefore, I have victory. Joy comes from our trust in the consistency of Jesus Christ and in his word. And so if I have an issue with joy, then I can only point it back to your trust in, consist- in God's consistency and his word. We keep getting back to this no matter what we talk about. We keep getting back to this idea of do you trust him? Do you trust him? Why don't I have joy? Because you don't trust him. It's real simple because you don't trust him because when we have trust in his consistency when we have trust in his word we have joy I talked about this uh, 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 first service I don't like LeBron I said it I'm just gonna put it out there uh, I don't like him um, I didn't like him in Florida uh, I don't I didn't like him in, uh, in Cleveland um, I don't like him now in Los Angeles uh, my wife will tell you I don't care who's playing him I don't care what team. It could be the worst team ever. I'm rooting for that team. Doesn't matter. I'm rooting for that team. And let me tell you why. I'm, uh, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Uh, you know, y'all came for service, but hey, here we are. Uh, uh, let me tell you why. I don't like LeBron's consistency. That's my problem. I'm going to put it out there. I don't like his consistency. He was in Miami with an unimaginable team. And, and what I didn't like is that um, LeBron um, was smart. Uh, he wouldn't play four quarters. LeBron would just pass the ball and mess around three quarters. They could be down by 75. <laughs> Doesn't matter. LeBron's fine. He gets to the fourth quarter, and it's like he turns his switch on. Like, okay, I'm going to play now. All right, that was the warm-up. Uh, I'm ready to go. It gets, does this little thing or whatever. And it don't matter. They can be down by 100. By the time we get to the last minute of the game, LeBron is going to be winning. And everybody knows this. He's in Miami. There are a million great players. He's in Cleveland. You know, well, he was in Cleveland. He coached. He GM'd. He did all of the things. Same thing. Now he's in L.A. He's, he's, he's you know, he's not really old because he's like our age. But in basketball, see, he's like, oh, he's an old man. And I saw him yesterday in the fourth quarter do a 360-degree dunk. And I'm like, it's the consistency that I have a problem with. <laughs> He's consistent in his effort. He's consistent in his winning. Here's the thing that I'm saying is you have to have trust in the consistency of God. 
Because God is way more consistent than LeBron. He wakes you up. He puts breath in your body. He puts clothes on your back. He makes sure that you're in your right mind. He makes sure that you're protected when you go to work. He makes sure you have what you need. He is consistent, so our trust has to be in the consistency of him and his word, and there is where our joy should lie. We got to be consistent. We got to trust in that consistency. Happiness will always be temporary because happiness depends on us. Happiness depends on on us. We must be believers who walks in joy. Our joy shows the world the living power of God in us. When when the world is going crazy, when they are going crazy, as the world will do when they see us and they see our consistency in spite of what goes around them, they ask, there's something different about you. Why why aren't you upset? Why aren't you going crazy because the gas prices are astronomical? Why aren't you going crazy because they're cleaning the shelves and you can't find toilet paper? Why why aren't you going crazy because the price of bread is up and the price of meat is up? It's because I know something. Psalms chapter 16, verse 11. Because I want to make sure, I'm way past my time, I want to make sure that you understand and you know how, as a believer, we get access to this joy, okay? How do we get access to this joy? Psalm 16, uh, verse 11 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of what? In your presence is fullness of joy. Your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. A New Testament, Romans Romans chapter 15, here we go. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all what? Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. May the God of hope fill you with all and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the Holy Spirit you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. How do I abound in hope? How do I overflow with his confidence? It's when the God of hope fills me with joy. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others, and what? Inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Since in his presence is fullness of joy. May the God of hope fill you with joy. The result of his presence within us is joy. These are directional markers that point us exactly to where joy is. Joy can only be found in Christ. Unfortunately, for so long, what has happened is that we've looked for joy in so many other things only to realize they provide temporary happiness. And once that happiness has left us, we, it leaves us more depleted than we were before. You go to that thing. You go to that vice looking for happiness. You go to that relationship looking for happiness. You go to that finance. You go to your checking account hoping to buy something that can, that can get you happiness only to realize that it leaves you more depleted than you were before. God created us to be people who are full of joy. And the only way that we can be full of joy is when we are full of him. When we are in his presence. When our hope is in him and when his spirit fully lives in us. See, we can't be teeter-totter. We can't be half in and half out. We can't be full of him and. You can't be in his presence and in the presence of. Can't be full of his spirit and other spirits. John chapter 15, verse 11. 
Verse 11 says, I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Jesus isn't offering this joy or this happiness that the world is offering. He is talking about a complete overflowing, a true joy that is only found in him, a joy that is profound, a joy that is all-encompassing sense of peace, a sense of contentment that comes from being united with him. It comes from knowing his love. It comes from being in relationship with him. That is joy. That's true joy. Now, what I'm not saying is that joy is an opportunity to ignore our feelings and our situations. And you could just willpower your way to joy. You could just say, I'm just going to be joyful. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. That couldn't be further from the truth. Life is real. As my niece says, life be life in. But because we live in a fallen world, we, we live in a world where we encounter opposition, we encounter sadness and discouragement just like everyone else. We are not uh, exempt from grief. We are not exempt from frustrations. We are not exempt from disappointments. But the difference for the believer is that we have a purpose that we have been given. And we have a hope that allows us to grab a hold of the joy, even in the darkest of circumstances. We have something that we can hold on to that allows us to remain grounded, to have a, have a firm footing despite the wind and the turmoil and, and the, 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 the rain and the storms that may be coming around us. We have something that we can hold on to that plants us firmly in the ground. We have joy. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Whew, some of y'all didn't even know where Habakkuk is. I can hear y'all trying to find it. Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, okay? Y'all know what it meant. It is either just use your table of contents. Habakkuk chapter 3. Old Testament, Habakkuk chapter 3. Verse 17 through 19. All right. Verse 17 says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herds in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on high places. Now, this was a bad day. For a farmer, this is Habakkuk here. He, he said, uh, 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 you know, I got these fig trees out here, but the fig trees didn't produce any fruit. They didn't, they didn't blossom. He said, that's okay, because I got these grapes on the vine. No, 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 the, the fruit, uh, the grapes didn't produce on the vines either. Cool, well, I, got these, I got these olive trees out here, these olive vines. Said, well, we got, so we can, at least we can do is have some olive oil. No, 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 the produce of the olive failed. What, what about the things that I planted in the ground, the crops? At least we can, no, 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 uh, uh, the crops, the fields yield no food. At least I got the sheep, right? I got the sheep, I got my chickens, I got, got my, my, my bulls out there. No, the flocks have been cut off from the fold and there be no herds in the stalls. This is a bad day for a farmer. In other words, he says, I have lost everything. I have nothing. Everywhere I turn, I have nothing at all. But he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. 
See, the only way that you could be in a situation like this and be able to say, I will rejoice in the Lord is when you know something. Yeah. It's when you know something. There is something that you have that you know that is bigger than your circumstance. That's where your joy lies. I'm, I'm reminded of, of the lady in the Bible, Dad, where, 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 where the, guy, the lady, the, the prophet uh, walks back to her and says, says uh, uh, how you doing? My son had died. He was dead. And he says, you know, no, no, how, how, how be it? How, how, how is it going? And she says, well, she says, she says, It is well with my soul. She says, it is well with my soul. Your baby is dead. How on earth can you even fix your mouth to say it is well? When the obvious thing the circumstance is about as bad as it can get. Yeah. But she knew that her circumstance was just that. It was a circumstance. It was something that could be changed. And she had enough faith and enough resolve. And she had, get this, she had enough trust in God and his promises and his word to know to confess differently. She didn't say what was going on. She says, it is well with my soul. And then her circumstance changed. Then everything turned around. Why? Because her, her resolve wasn't in what was going on. Her peace and her joy wasn't in what was going on. She had something that she held on to that was firm. She had a firm foundation, and that is where her joy was. Habakkuk 12 says, looking away from all that will distract us. And focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, the first incentive from our belief, and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. He says, just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. He says, consider it in comparison to your trials. He said, you mad about your job, but did they put a crown of thorns on your head? You mad about your relationship, but did they pierce nails through your hands? You upset because your finances are low, but did they hang you on a cross? He says, consider it all in comparison with your trials, not to minimize it, but as my wife says, it's perspective. It's perspective. And he says, he says, I want you to consider what Jesus, because, because it's sometimes we get to the point that we feel like, no, but no, uh, God can't possibly have gone through this. And that's when we get to this part. We just so upset. We so angry. God, how could you? Like he hasn't gone through this. He says, consider it in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Very quickly, the very beginning of this is something I just want you to just take it and I want you to put it in your pocket. And then when you need it, you're going to pull it out and you're going to use it. You ready for this? Looking away from all that will distract us. When you encounter situations, opposition, things that are happening, the first thing that you need to ask yourself, is this a distraction? That's okay. You ain't got to put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. Ask yourself this question. I can't figure out what's going on and all this, da 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 Is this a distraction? And then he says, when you recognize it, look away from all that will distract us and focus our eyes on Jesus. That's free. And you put that in your pocket. Okay. And he says, he says, for the joy of accomplishing the goal that was set before him. What better example do we have than Jesus? Circumstances don't get much darker than what he walked through. For the joy that was set before him. That means the joy wasn't his yet. 
But because there was a joy attached to the completed goal, he chose to do it. There was something that was attached to the goal. That's why it was set before him. He says he, says he endured it for the joy that was set before him. He endured uh, glass shards and nails being ripped through his back. He endured long nails being placed through his hands and placed through his feet. A spear piercing his side. He endured the shame of laying on a cross naked. He endured the shame of people spitting on him. He endured it. And he endured it because he knew you and I those who are online and everyone who is sitting here today would be dependent on him completing that goal. The joy of salvation for those who are lost. The joy of eternity spent with him. The joy of God's restored relationship with his creation. You and I here today, we are the joy that was set before him. And for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He was focused on the goal. He was focused on you and I. And that was the joy that was set before him. That was the joy that was set before him. He was focused on that goal. See, see sometimes uh, 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 our, our, our joy, sometimes it's a focus before it's a feeling. Sometimes it's something that we have to focus on because our feelings, are, are, our emotions, are some, they are a result of what's happening around us and they, chant, they change. And because they change, we have to set our focus on the goal. And so we focus sometimes before it becomes a feeling. Despite my surroundings, my focus is the hope. I'm focused on the promise. I'm focused on the joy. This is why I have joy despite my surroundings. This is why I have joy even though I'm being attacked at work. This is why I have joy even though my finances aren't where I want them to be. I have joy even though my kids aren't acting right. I have joy when I don't have happiness because happiness is what's happening around me, but joy is about what happened inside me. It's a difference. Happiness is dependent on me, but joy is dependent on him. And he never changes, and his word and his promises are true. Yeah, Listen, most times, your joy won't make sense to your situation. And that's fine, because the outcome as a result of your joy won't either. The thing that you receive as a result of staying in joy, that won't make sense to people either. I don't understand why you still have joy in spite of circumstances. That's okay, because when you see the fruit of what happens as a result of me being in this joy, you ain't going to understand that either. Wow. Wow. Nehemiah had just rebuilt the walls of the city. He had just faced opposition. He, he's facing these things, and he prevailed because the Lord was with him. He, he built the wall. People returned to Jerusalem, and they were safe, and they began to, to, to have a service, and they begin to hear the word of God. And as they begin to hear the word of God, the people were crying. This is a pastor's dream that before you even get to the service, just from hearing the word, they started crying, and they began weeping. Nehemiah 8, verse 9 says, Then Ezra said to them, Go your way, eat the rich festival food, drink the drink, send portions of them to whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to your Lord. And do not be worried, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. The joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. We experience the Lord's strength, listen to this, when we deliberately choose to recognize the joy that is already ours because of how much God loves us and what Christ has already done for us. We make a deliberate decision. In spite of what's going on around me, I choose joy. Despite of what's happening in my circumstance, I choose joy. As I'm walking through the circumstance, my focus is joy. 
my focus is joy. This is what Christmas was all about. The joy given to the world that a Savior had been born. That we were dead in our trespasses. That we were separated from God, but he sent his son to save us. He sent his son to be the sacrifice for our sins so that we could be restored in right relationship with him. This is the hope. This is where our joy is rooted in. This is where our joy is rooted in. The angel said, behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. This is where the joy was. This is where, this is where the joy began. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Not, not on me. Not because of what I have, not because of what I don't have, not because of my my spouse, not because of my girlfriend, boyfriend, not because of my relationship. I got it down in my heart to stay because it's his and he never changes, so it's here to stay. German philosopher says, if you want me to believe in your redeemer, then you're going to have to start looking a bit more redeemed. Our countenance preaches to people. Doesn't mean that we got to walk around with a permanent smile, but it is a powerful testimony when we rejoice even in the midst of adversity. Joy is a magnet that God has given us to attract the world. When they say, why are you happy? Well, how can you still smile? You just experienced tragedy. How are you not losing your mind? It's because I know something. It's because I got something that I can hold on to. No matter what's going on around me, it's going to be the same. The joy of the Lord is my strength. This is the basis and the foundation for our joy. Jesus came to save us from the power and the penalty of sin. And whatever we are going through in life, we can remember that we have a Savior, we have Christ, we have the Lord. We have the Lord. And he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans of good and not of evil, plans of a better than expected end. That's what my hope is. So I can't, I, I, can't, I can't be distracted. I focus my eyes on Jesus. Even if I don't like the outcome, even if I don't understand the outcome, then I go back to his consistency. God, I wanted this job and I didn't get it. He is faithful. He is consistent. God, I wanted this relationship to work, but it didn't. He is faithful. He is consistent. God, God, my bank account, uh, I I thought that money was going to come through. It didn't come through. He is faithful. He is consistent. I spent all that time praying for a healing, and, and I feel like they didn't get healed, God. But he is faithful. He is consistent. The joy of the Lord, which is rooted in his consistency and his character, is my strength. And I want to admonish you today. I dare you to make this your focus in this season and the upcoming year. I dare you to say that no matter what goes on around me, no matter what's happening while I'm in school, no matter what's happening while I'm at work, while I'm at home, the joy of the Lord is my strength. No matter what circumstances, no matter what what financial, no matter what family, relational, I don't care what it is. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I shall not be moved. I didn't get the job I wanted. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Things ain't working out like I thought they should. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 